Hi everyone, and welcome to my next video tutorial, which is going to be focused on providing version control for our model instances. Now, this can be very helpful to ensure that you are able to recover deleted model instances. And another thing to keep in mind is that this can also be very useful for auditing, compliance, and any sort of regulation purposes as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing that I wanna mention, like always, make sure that you have a project that you wanna work with. Now, in my case here, of course, like usual, I have my Django project ready, and I also have a Django app that I created as well, because we're also going to have to create a model and also register that model as well. All right, so let's get started. Now, the first thing that we want to do is to see the extent of this particular library. So what you can do with this library is you can do a few things. So the aspect which I'm going to show you in this video tutorial is how you can go about recovering your deleted model instances. But what you can also essentially do is you can roll back to any point in a model instances history as well, which we're also going to delve into. So let's go ahead now and install the library as follows. So I just want to zoom in here. So you can see the whole process. So we want to install Django reversion. So that is the library name. So we can go ahead and copy that. And in your terminal, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and install Django reversion. So I'm just saying pip install Django reversion. Okay, so it might just take a moment to install. There we go. Now we can add reversion to our list of installed apps. So we can copy that. And you can head on over to your project settings.py file. So I'm just going to navigate accordingly. And let me scroll down to my list of installed apps. Okay, so let's add reversion in. Just be sure to add in a comma at the end. Then you just want to make the migrations for this app here. So what we can do is go ahead to our terminal and say python manage.py and we can just say migrate. So that's gonna migrate all the default database files behind this app. So there should be two um, initial migrations set here and ready to go. Perfect. And now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a simple model to work with before we can integrate the admin side. So what I'd suggest you do is to head on over to a Django app within your project. So I have an app here called CRM. And I would recommend you open your models.py file and also your admin.py file right next to it as well, just to save you some time. So in our models.py file, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add in a sample model that I've created. You're more than welcome to use the one that I have, or you can create your own one. It's really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and copy this model here and paste that in. There we go. And now what I want to do is I just want to make the default migrations for this particular model. So as you can see, it is a person model, which takes in two attributes, which is going to be the name of the person and just a description. So what we can do now, if we're happy with our model, we can just say Python manage.py make migrations. Okay, and you just want to do that and that's going to create the model for us, perfect. And then we want to push this model to our SQLite database. So we can say Python manage.py migrate. There we go. So we have migrated that model. Perfect. Great. So we've got that set. And we can then head on over to our admin.py file. Now we're going to register our model in a different way. So what we're going to want to do first of all is from the reversion.admin. Uh, library that we have gone ahead and set up. We want to import the version admin class. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can copy the following and in admin.py, you want to add the following in. Then we're going to register our model in this way. We're going to use a decorator and then within parentheses, we'll add in our model, which we're going to call. So before we can continue, we just want to import our model. Now keep in mind our models.py file is in the same directory as our admins.py file. So all we would need to do is say from dot, 
and then go to your models.py file, refer to the class name. In our case, our model name, class name is person. So we would need to refer to the file. So we need to say from.models and then you can say import person. Great, so now let's go ahead and set up our class. So here we are registering our class in a unique way. We are deriving our own class and then we're going to pass through that version admin class as well. Now the pass statement here, of course, is just, uh, how can I put this, a keyword or a statement you could say that we use just to ensure that we can go about running our code without having an empty class. So it's like a placeholder of sorts to make sure that we can run and debug our code without any errors. So it's very helpful. If you don't want to add any configuration settings in your class, because usually if you uh, specify your class this way and register your model, you're going to have some configuration settings that you can add here, optional ones, such as setting your fill display in Django admin, or setting up a list display or anything of the sort. But in that case, we don't want to do any of that, so we'll keep it simple. You can just add in that pass statement. So we can just go ahead and add in this logic to our admin.py file. And up top here, we're going to use a decorator to register our model. So our model is called person. So we can just replace the value in the parentheses as person. The class here, we can just call this person admin to make it a bit more readable and appropriate to our case. We're going to pass on through the version admin class and we can keep that pass statement as is. Now, another thing that we need to do, of course, is when we register a model for the first time and we're using this Django revision library, you want to run the create initial revisions command. Right, so what you can do now is you can go ahead and open up your terminal, stop your server as it's running, and you can say python manage.py and then all you need to do is go ahead and copy this command, paste it in, and just remove that full stop at the end. So it's going to say python manage.py, create initial revisions, and press enter. And as you're going to see, it's going to say creating revisions for a person that is that model that we assigned, and it's going to detect that through the logic that we've implemented here since we're registering that model and it's created zero out of zero revision. So this is important because you want to start off by collecting and setting up the version control early on in the beginning. Right, so we've got that in place. Now the next step of course is to create our super user. So we can access our Django admin, create objects, delete them, recover them. So let's do that. So let's say python manage.py. And what you want to do is you want to go on ahead and create your super user. So you can say Python manage.py and create super user. Okay, the username can be on the default, skip email, enter in a password. And there we go, and let's run our server. Okay, perfect. And then you can head on to Jago admin, just refresh, and now we can enter in our super user credentials. Right, so after entering in your super user credentials, you can proceed to log into your Django admin. And here, as we can see under my CRR map where I created my person model, I can click on that. And now, as you can see, we have an option already to recover deleted person, so our deleted objects. So what we can do now is just add in a new object, so a new person. So I'm just gonna say here, John Doe. Uh, let's say tall, uh, brown hair, blue eyes. And let's go ahead and save that particular object. So we can see, okay, that object was added successfully. Good. Now, something that I want to show you off the bat already is how we can recover a deleted person object. So what you can do is go ahead and click on that particular object, go to action, say deleted selected persons, say go. And let's confirm that you're sure to delete that object, object is gone. Now let's just refresh and head on back to our object and you can just say recover deleted persons. And here it's gonna show a list of all of the deleted versions of an object. So we can see here, we've got this person object here in place. And of course we can see the time that it of course was deleted. So we can click on this. And we can see, okay, this was that version of the object here that we want to instantiate to recover. So you can just say save, and that's going to go on ahead 
and bring that object back to life. So if you go back to it, you can see, okay, that is exactly what you had before. And that's how that was recovered. So if we look here at um, the features here, so we recovered deleted model instances. And of course that has been into place set up as we can see it has been. Now, uh, another part that I want to delve into is going back to a particular version of this object. So let's say, for example, I look at this object and I can see here it says John Doe, tall, brown hair, blue eyes. Let's say I want to change the name here a few times. So I'm going to change this to Kyle Smith. Save. Okay, let's go back to the object. Say this was KT uh, Mills. Save. Okay. So I've created a few versions now. So what you can essentially do is if you click on your object, you can see we have history. So we can go ahead and click on history and we can see here the actions and what we have gone ahead and performed. So I can see here, I changed the name, I changed the name here. And I can also see that I can choose a date from the list to revert to a previous version of this object. So let me see what I have at the moment. So it says Katie Mills. Let me go to this change here in the beginning. And that is to Kyle Smith. So, we can, so you can see here before you revert back, you can see the version that you want to revert to. So if we go back to history and look at this version, okay, this is the current version that we're at, Katie Mills. So what I can do is go on back to this version here for Kyle Smith and I can say save. Okay, that was saved. I can go back and I can see here, okay, it changed back to Carl Smith. Let me change everything now. Let's say, um, um, and let's say uh, average height. And let's say blue eyes. And let's say, um, uh, Brown hair. Save. All right, let's click on that object, go to history, and we can see a little bit more now it has been changed. So let's say I want to go right back here to the action when this uh, object was created. It's going to take me to the original version that I had here, which was John Doe, tall, brown hair, blue eyes. Let's say save. Go back to that object. I can see I'm back where I was. And we've got that set. Now, of course, that is going to pertain to going back to particular object versions that we so would have liked to have attempted. Right, guys, so that's it for this video tutorial on reverting back to our previous object instances, you could say, and to have some sort of version control in place here, which is very useful, especially with recovering deleted objects. So that's a very useful and easy feature to integrate within your Django projects. So that's it guys and as always thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.